drives a major uh, influence on the climate of the peninsula area because the cool monsoon winds pass through the Palakkad gap to Tamil Nadu plain, making it looking moderate. Lots of similarly, the cyclones which form in the Bay of Bengal enter into Kerala through not cyclone as such, the cyclone winds and through Kerala to the Palakkad Gap and making it available both the benefits of the different types of rain systems and climate systems. So these things will come to it later. So uh, the the history of gap as such is very very the Palakkad Gap. The history of Palakkad Gap is as old as the uh, history of the uh, Gondwana land. So. This is very ancient system, and so this is. Um, if you if you take a, a cross section of the Western Ghats from uh, south to north, there are very uh, characteristic features. I would like to summarize this to understand this uh, Palakkad system. So if you start from the right hand side, that is the Kanyagumari Trivandrum side. So the first uh, discontinuity what you observe is the uh, Aringavu Pass. So that is not a. Uh, it is only a, can only we can only call it as a valley, not as a gap as we see in Western Ghats. Then you have this, uh, Palne, uh, this uh, Pandalan Hills and Cardamom Hills, that is basically the, uh, then Anamalai is another thing where you have high altitudes and if you have the Eastern Spur of Western Ghats, that is the uh, Palni Hills. And then you have a Palakkad Gap. Then again, it suddenly, you, you'll notice that the, the drop of the altitude is from 2,600, 700 meter to almost 800 even lesser than less than 800 meters then suddenly you have again the niligiri massif that is about uh, more than 2000 meters then you have the continuation of the uh, western guards in the Wayanad plateau you have then you have the uh, that um, kudramukh hills another thing then you have the then up to goa you have this um, the western guards then you have the sahyadri ranges so the uh, geologically these systems are entirely different so like because if you see the trandrum uh, side what the mountains you have is basically condrolites archaic condrolites mountains then in the anomalies and nilgiris you have these archean charnocate mountains and you have this archean peninsular mesis in the uh, karnataka part then after goa north of goa or slightly north of goa you have this deccan tract formation so that is the basically the uh, the volcanic episodes of the so I will come to it a little later. Then you have, there are other characteristic features of Western Ghats is that the average annual rainfall is highest in this, um, the central part of Western Ghats, not in the southern part. That is the average annual rainfall that is mostly towards the Agumbe, Kudramuk part, you have very high annual rainfall. And in, on either side, both and south, you have a lesser rainfall. Then you have the number of rainy days, if you see the the uh, southern part, that is the south of Palagat Gap, you have more number of rainy days, that is, it is more wetter. And similarly, the duration of dry season is higher in the northern part. Sakyatri ranges, you have nearly eight months of rainy season. And the southern part, you have like uh, even two months of rainy season, only what you observe in like Agastya Malay and other places. Similarly, if you look at the generally, if you talk about species diversity of all groups, the southern part of Western Ghats are having higher species diversity and higher species endemism than the northern part. And all most of the wet ploughing species, either with amphibians or other uh, insects or other things, they are more found in the uh, southern part of the Western Ghats than in northern part. And because of this um, uh, longitudinal gradient, big uh, will say like uh, latitudinal gradient of these Western Ghats, you have different ecosystems. So you have a, uh, like you can see that there are mountain evergreen forests, then you have these West Coast moist deciduous and semi evergreen forests. So on that is on the windward side and on the leeward side where this both basically rain shadow region, it has influence of the uh, Deccan Peninsula where you have several dry forest types are missing, uh, available. So this is the, like, I, a drainage map of the Western Ghats. So I have a little bit cut on the eastern side to make it more this one. You can see that the there are two major drainages that is this west flow, flowing uh, rivers and then east flowing. So east flowing mostly you have this uh, uh, Godavari, Krishna, uh, Kaveri uh, rivers. So they are the drainages of Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. Then you have this other rivers like Tamraparni, 
other smaller rivers in the southern western parts. So the history of uh, Palakkad Gap is as old as uh, Gondwana. Gondwana. So you all may be aware that once upon a time all the land masses were together, and this is called uh, Gondwana. And about 150 million years ago, they started breaking apart. So before that, the India was part of this uh, Gondwana, and it had uh, land land bridge uh, land connections with Madagascar and uh, Antarctica and Australia. And this is evidenced by uh, several fossil records and also by the availability of several ancient lineages in this landmass even now. So about uh, 90 million years ago. So the 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 part of Western Ghats was together with Madagascar. So you, if you look at the if you look at any atlas and if you see if you see the central highland of uh, Madagascar and the Western Ghats, they are like just the mirror images. And the Palakkad Gap, what we see is that it I have circled in red, is actually called the Palakkad Kaveri Shear Zone. So there is a shear zone that is the uh, where the plates join. So these are the in there is a shear zone and similarly there is a shear zone in the uh, Madagascar which continues to the Africa also now. Also. So there is a continuous belt of shear zone in the this one. And this is again uh, another uh, digital elevation model of the same thing. So you have this uh, yellow encircled parts called this is called the Ranotsara Gap in Madagascar. So this Ranotsara Gap in Madagascar is the mirror image of the Palakkad Gap. What we have. So this is like this is just juxtaposes to each other like a jigsaw puzzle. So actually, when the Western Guards evolved about um, uh, when the India split from the Madagascar and when it actually was passing through the uh, reunion hotspot. So these hotspots are. Uh, tectonic uh, the plate crust uh, plates in the uh, earth crust where this the thickness of the plate is lesser so you have this regular volcanic episodes there so when the indian landmass was split from the gondwana and it started moving northwards that madagascar also joined with india and for a long for a long time it was together and it was moving together and then some about 98 million years ago it started splitting from the the uh, indian plate the Madagascar part. So that time, the when it split, it, it opened like a zipper from north to south. It opened like a zipper, and it split apart. And during that period, the Palagat Gap was part of the uh, the uh, the together. The Palagat Gap and the Madagascar was together. And this you can actually see that there is a continuity. And the the Palagat Gap is the only part of India which still tells about our ancient um, connection with the Madagascar. So geologically, it is very important. And there are several uh, very good uh, geological studies on the, this aspect. So you can read further on this if you are interested. So this is the summary of the what happened. So about um, 150 million years ago, the peninsular India part, that is the Gondwana land split and started moving northwards. It is called the flight of India. So when it moved, it moved as an island and it also carried a lot of fauna with it, fauna and flora with it. And for a long time, it was in the equator. So that during that time, several faunal groups, especially the primitive groups evolved and several of our uh, ancient lineages evolved during that time when it was in the tropicals for a considerable amount of time. So that is the remnants of those uh, tropical rainforests you can still see as coal in uh, like in desert area, like tar desert, lignite, you have uh, coal and you have the coal belt in the Bihar, Chhattisgarh and other places. These are all the remnants of that old forest which were there once upon a time. And about uh, 120 to 130 million years ago, it moved over the reunion hotspot, Marion reunion hotspot. So that is a time when this it splitted from the started splitting from the Madagascar, and that is a time the Western Ghats evolved. And about 65 million years ago, then Deccan volcanic episodes started happening. So Deccan volcanic lava started flowing about uh, 65 million years ago, and it continued for several million years. And that happened. That is also the time when the uh, dinosaurs, uh, dinosaurs and uh, 
uh, dinosaurs went extinct during that time. And the about uh, 65 to 45 million years ago, the faulting of this peninsula chain of mountains gave rise to the now the kind of geomorphology you see. And about 45 million years ago, the India collided with Asia mainland. So that is the time when the Himalaya started racing. So the Himalayan mountains are much, much younger than the Western Ghat mountains. And that is why the, they are very now also very unstable, but Western Ghat is much more stable. So about 15 million years ago, you started uh, having these monsoons, so the regular monsoon because of the race in Himalaya, you start having the monsoon, this one. And the current topography, monsoon, streams, waterfalls, all of them are about 15 million years old. So this is the flight of India I was talking about. So the India, if you look at India, it moved in a considerable speed to the Asian plate from the Gondwan island. It is called the flight of India. And in geological times, it is a very fast movement. And still it is abutting with the Eurasian plate. That is why you still have a lot of earthquakes and other things in the Himalayan part. And along with India, Sri Lanka also moved. And India and Sri Lanka was connected till last um, glacial um, glaciation. So that is about 20,000 years ago. It had land bridge connection. That is why we share a lot of fauna in Sri Lanka with Sri Lanka. So this is the, the current uh, existing uh, geomorphology of the peninsula of India. So you can see this, the Deccan trap is mostly about 16 degree. That is the, the Deccan volcanic episode. So you have the layers of uh, lava flowing and you have the different geomorphology of the western gulfs above more than 16 degree north but most of the southern you have this um, arc and peninsula misses for kind of formations where you have granite and other formation which is very ancient and on the coastal side you have this mostly the, the recent uh, depositions of alluvium and other formations. so with the geology and also if you look at the uh, paleo vegetation so that is last about uh, uh, 22,000 years ago uh, 22,000 years ago that is a glacial maximum time you had most of the India covered with the grassland so it became very dry so because and only the it was very dry and only the southern part of the uh, western Ghats and Sri Lanka had moisture so so this is based on pollen uh, pollen grain studying so most of the forest and other things were concentrated on the uh, southern part and this is one reason you have then about 11,000 years ago, the climate started warming up and the vegetation started reappearing in most part of India. So this is the uh, last 11,000 years ago, this was the vegetation and this is still in present day vegetation, potential vegetation has not changed much because the climate relatively, these climates were stable for last 11,000 years. So this is also the time, also the time when most of the human civilization uh, colonized most part of India and agriculture was started at most in most part of India. So there is a lot of archaeological evidences for that. And if you see the general biome of India, you have the west coast, you have tropical biome and adjoining you have semi-arid and arid biomes of the Deccan Ghat. So the entire western Ghat formed a kind of refugia, refugia to most of the wet loving species another thing because there is a dry corridor between the eastern India and the western Ghats and there is an in between that's a big dry corridor through which many of these wet loving species cannot uh, colonize or migrate from one place to another uh, other than very highly dispersible uh, species most of the wet loving species can't colonize and uh, during the last uh, glacial maximum several of the northern species they started migrating to southern southern places and colonize the mountain range. So that we will come to it later. And the there are like this is just, you may be aware of this one. So there are several uh, biogeographic provinces are there and the Western Ghats is one biogeographic province and you have this uh, uh, other on the western side you have these Malabar plains and Western Ghat mountain ranges you have. On the eastern side, you have the Deccan, the southern Deccan part, and you have the uh, western Deccan part, you have that is this one. So these are the major 
landmark countries. Now uh, coming to Palakkad Gap. So this is a uh, photograph of uh, Palakkad Gap from flight. So what? Uh, this is not slightly north of Palakkad. This is what the. This is the what we are seeing here is the uh, Shirwani Dam here, and this is the Palakkad Gap. So this is we have the Nilgiri Massif rising from the. So this is the uh, like a digital elevation map of Palagad Gap. So here you see the Palagad Gap is about uh, 30 kilometer wide gap, and on the eastern side you have on the eastern side you have the Coimbatore Plains, and on the uh, western side you have the Malabar Plains, and you have the Nilagiri Mountain Massif on the north, and Anamale Massif on the south. Then you have the Atapadi Valley through which the Bhavani River flows to the Kaveri system. Then you have another small range of mountain that is what we call it as Palakkad Hills. So you have these uh, uh, Sirwani Hills and Bodo Ambati, Markambati Ranges of the uh, Coimbatore Park. You have this. Uh, this so if you take a cross section of the Palakkad Gap, the two things you will notice. This is the first one. This is the First one is that from the coast to the uh, Anamalai Hills on the other side, so that you have a sudden raise of mountains. Then again, it comes go joins Tamil Nadu. And if you take another section, that is a two section from Anamalai to Nilgiri, if you through Palagad Gap, you see. So here you are seeing the Anamalai Mountains. Then you have this uh, Palagad Plains. Then you have uh, the Palagad Mountains, then you have this Atapadi Valley, then you have the Nilagiri Hills. So, so if you take a cross section through Nilagiri, so you have the Silent Valley that is part of the uh, Bharatapura River system. You have the Silent Valley here, and you have this Bhavani Valley here, Bhavani River, which flows through the Atapadi. Then you have this. Uh, Nilgiri Mountains, from plains to Moyar Gorge. This is Moyar Gorge coming here, take here. So you, this is the kind of topography and geomorphology you get. So you have plains, then you have a sudden wall-like uh, Nilgiri Massive. That is the. So that makes a very important uh, influence on the climate of the system. So how it influences the climate of the area region. So on the, this is the distance from the coast. So you have the west coast here and this is the average annual rainfall and we, this is the altitude on the right side and left side we have the average annual rainfall. The average annual rainfall is about 3000 mm in the uh, Malabar plains. So that is the Palakkad gap you have about 2500 to 3000 mm depending on but there is a gradient like if you uh, towards the coast west side you have higher rainfall and towards the Coimbatore side you have lesser rainfall. So sometimes it is as less as 900 meter if you go towards the uh, Kurnyambara and other places. So, but the rainfall generally increases in the mountains. It reaches up to 6,000, more than 6,000 meter in Mukurt and other things. Then in again, it suddenly drops in the Nilgiri Plateau to about 2,000 meter. And again, it drops very considerably less in the Maya Gorge. And here you get the influence of Southwest monsoon. So that is the, June to September you get and here this part you get the influence of northeastern monsoon that is from the uh, October, November, December you get but here also you have the influence of the cyclone. So to this grade, to this environmental gradients you also have different vegetation types. So on the western side you will get evergreen forest up to Mukurk you get. Then you have this mountain shola grassland systems you get on the Nilgiri plateau and on the eastern side you have dry deciduous and scrub forests. So these are the major um, uh, vegetation types that you see in this part, Palagad Gap area and mountains of Palagad Gap. This is your tropical evergreen forest. So you have from 200 meters to uh, 1,500 meters average sea level and where the rainfall ranges from 2,500 to 5,000 mm. Then you have moist deciduous forest that is from 500 to 900 meter altitude and about 2500 to uh, 3500 rainfall. Then you have dry deciduous forest that is on the eastern side, you get like Walaya and other places, you have 
is dry deciduous forest that is some 300 to 900 meter then you have scrub jungles where the less altitude and less rainfall is there then you have shola forest that is mountain shola forest that is above 1500 meter altitude and medium to high rainfall then you have savannas where you have medium to high rainfall areas then high rainfall savanna this is mountain grasslands basically extremely high rainfall then extremely high wind also then you have peat bogs so these are very small patches we have it in nilgiris that is where the rainfall is more than 2000 uh, altitude is more than 2000 mm and with very heavy rainfall so this is the uh, vegetation and the uh, map of palakkad gap so basically showing vegetation and major uh, uh, towns and villages so you have a forest vegetation on the northern southern part so this basically nilgiris and anamalai so this forms the part of nilgiri biosphere reserve and this forms the a part of the anamalai tiger reserve and several protected areas are located so here you see that uh, the previous table i showed you the the different forest types you are seeing but here basically showing what is a current vegetation site so most of the attapadi it is uh, deforested and it has a uh, agriculture hmm? and uh, you have the dry deciduous kind of forest on the eastern side essentially showing so this is a, a vegetation map of nilgiri biosphere reserve where it clearly shows that you have the evergreen forest on the western side then you have the shola grasslands on the uh, mountain plateau then again you have this dry forest so this here some of these dry forest also elements into so here when we talk um, the the palakkad gap politically has uh, parts in both in tamil nadu and in kerala but geology geographically and ge biogeographically there is no it is a continuum so the animals and plants just use this uh, natural continuum and this uh, political uh, boundary have no meaning so this is the um, uh, some of the landscape features in uh, palakkad gap just to show you some feel for it so this is the bhavani river i already showed you the bhavani valley there so this is the bhavani river in mukali so this is a very uh, very well known uh, iconic malleshwaram mudi in attapadi where tribes venerate it as a, a form of shiva so shiva is supposed to be this whole mountain is supposed to be shiva this malleshwaram mudi in attapadi so we are traveling through attapadi valley then you have this uh, dry deciduous kind of forest in attapadi then this is the kundi stream kundi river basically at a upper reaches in a silent valley national park before becoming kundi river and this is a mid elevation uh, tropical rainforest in silent valley you can see that so this is again a canopy of a mid elevation tropical rainforest then you have this the, the how this nilgiri massif influences the, the climate of the peninsula it's a classic example this is the new amarambaram valley taken from sispara so it actually kind of wall so we, this is the top you can see the grasslands uh, belongs to the mukurthi national park so this is the this part new amarambaram part is the nilambur division so this is the kind of influence the nilgiri has on the vegetation and climate of the region so this is a uh, shola grasslands of uh, sispara already talked about uh, shola grasslands then you have this uh, kundipura very famous i think this is one of the most uh, most photographed part of the western ghats sorry this uh, this of course is repeated so you have uh, dry deciduous forest again on the extreme uh, eastern side where the rainfall is very uh, mostly dry scrub on the other side then you have paddy fields and uh, human modified landscapes this is a paddy fields to the Himalaya. then you have these uh, dams and reservoirs constructed by okay. then what is the what are the uh, characteristics of biodiversity in this park so like recently that uh, very well known a cartoonist rohan chakravarty has made a beautiful cartoon of the influence of palakkad gap basically uh, work by uh, robin uh, many of you may be knowing robin 
so robin and uh, some recent discoveries so basically earlier people thought that the, the many bird species which is which look similar and which are on either side of alagad gap based on earlier understanding of uh, taxonomy and biogeography were thought to be a subspecies or even sometimes even variants of uh, the same species say for example the uh, shalikli was earlier it was even thought that uh, shalikli was earlier the related to the himalayan short wings and it was called uh, white bellied and blue wing uh, white bellied and orange bellied short wings and blue short wings and later on lot of studies on molecular studies and uh, biogeographic studies have shown that these are indeed a uh, distinct genera endemic to western ghats and the uh, palakkad gap has influenced the speciation of that is called allopatric speciation in technical terms into like two distinct similarly the the laughing thrushes of the the high altitude laughing thrushes of course and all these were high altitude laughing thrushes and uh, uh, this shalikli and recently on the uh, our wood snakes the ones which was considered as uh, same species now it is split into different species based on this one so but it, it does it is not always true that a palakkad gap has uh, has this role of uh, like uh, splitting the lineages uh, like evolutionary lineage it also has been a uh, not only as a uh, what you call a geographic barrier but also as a geographic corridor for dispersal of species so if you look at the flora there are uh, several uh, species of uh, in various groups so these are some of the interesting groups what you see in the reverse these are the odostemaceae groups which is uh, angiosperms and they look like algae and found in our hill streams so these are some of the species found in this one then you have on the high altitude you have both in the nilgiris and animals several groups of uh, very interesting high altitude species which have a similarity with the himalayan species uh, himalayan alpine meadows like especially the pedicularis and the, uh, lasimachia dorsera ediocoran all those species have uh, similarities with the himalayan species then you have very very interesting uh, species which is uh, which have very high narrow endemism these are called uh, yams these are wild species of arisima arisima barnesi and arisima nationality especially very common in monsoon in uh, rainforest the very common uh, found in nilgiris and either on the then you have this um, ancient relics of plants like this is uh, uh, sayatia nilgirensis found in our forest these are some of the plants then you have this uh, the tall evergreen forest uh, icon of tall evergreen forest is pulinia exarelata very important species for different uh, groups of animals as a food source and uh, several uh, species of terrestrial invertebrates so not going to identification of several of these ones so but some of these are very interesting for example this indrella ambula is the only a genus in this species is it's endemic to western ghats and is found in like both south and north of palakkad gap so i was telling you that it is not that it is a barrier to species so indranal ambula it comes in different color forms so they are all same species and but they are found in both north and south of palakkad gap and it is it is found like up to like uh, in south it is found uh, even uh, very down south it is found and even in uh, northern western ghats it is found even up to pudramukh uh, you can see this species in relambula but it is a monotypic species what we call it, there is only one uh, species in this genera it's a land uh, land snail and found in evergreen forests and there are several aquatic arthropods and macroinvertebrates which i am not going into detail then you have uh, several uh, damsel flies and which are all very ancient lineage and they also have distribution north and south of palakkad it is not that they are they are actually very their flight abilities are very limited and very restricted so they have distribution north and south of palakkad for example this uh, first one the protostica devonport is a very weak flying uh, forest damsel fly and it is found both in uh, north and south of palakkad similarly this indostica decanensis this also found in north and south of palakkad and in fact um, 
basically not extremely not basically these are found from kurg to uh, southern western ghats so the palakkad gap was never a barrier for the uh, dispersal of this species but the third species the phylonura westermanni which is found mostly with meristica strans and other thing is mostly restricted to uh, north of palakkad gap so it is mostly found in uh, silent valley and all you can say good population but it is found in north of palakkad gap and it is not found so then there are this um, again other uh, dragon flies which are gondwan in lineage based on molecular studies and other thing so these are ancient or dragon flies they are also found north and south of palakkad gap so here also there was no uh, this is barrier for dispersal so if you look at go to any stream these are the uh, common uh, damsel flies you see uh, in in not only in palakkad gap but throughout the western world these families are very prominent but there are closely related damsel flies which is found on either side of palakkad gap so like for example you have this uh, Uh, Euphorbia dispar, which is found north of Palakkad, sorry, uh, north of Palakkad, yeah, up to Kodi uh, Kodi and Kodi uh, Kodi, you can see Kodi Kodi Vaina, you can see. Then you have this Euphorbia cardinalis, which is found from southern western Ghats to Anamalai. So this is the here the, the Palakkad gap is a barrier for the has become a barrier for the dispersal of this closely related species. Then you have species that is restricted to high high altitude shrubland grassland. So these are also species which you have relatives on in the himalayas like uh, chlorogomphus or the chlorosanthopter these are found in the high uh, high altitude grasslands of the nilgiris and anamalai earlier it was thought that the uh, chlorogomphus campioni is restricted to nilgiris and chlorogomphus anthopter is restricted to anamalai but a recent surveys show that the chlorogomphus campioni is found even up to kanyagumari so it has a very wide distribution in western world but they are all distributed in high altitude then you have uh, butterflies which are also have a wide distribution endemic butterflies which have wide distribution on either side of palakkad so tamil lacewing is a classic example which have wide distribution but these species are not found in the pal gap as such but they are all forest species not found in the gap but they are found either side of the gap but there are uh, closely related species which are found on either side of the palakkad gap for example that like the snake you have this um, nilgiri and palani fritillary so these are found on either side of the palakkad gap so earlier taxonomy thought that these were all same species indian fritillary so they were all pulled together and made into one species indian fritillary but recent studies suggest they are they are all different species similarly bush brown so these are all mycalesis or various you know, talinga species so you have this red disk bush brown that is south of palakkad gap and related species the nilgiri bush brown or red eye bush brown is found in the nilgiri but in the gap as such these species are not found if you look at the freshwater species in the bardapura is the uh, drainage which which drains the palakkad gap so the freshwater fishes there are about 117 species of fishes reported from bardapura Based in all of which, 28 are endemic to Western Ghats. So endemic Western Ghats have very high diversity of uh, freshwater fishes, and of these, only three are endemic to all the three are Gulf Stream fishes. All three are endemic to the Bardapur as such Palakkad basin itself, but all others are found in different parts of Western Ghats. If you look at amphibians, amphibians also give interesting story than the um, birds or Birds or reptiles. Just go and look at the Palakkad Gap is uh, relatively dry in terms of the like you have very hot summer and you have a monsoon. You have a monsoon, but it is relatively hot and dry, and you have a long windy period also. So several species are found on either side of Palakkad Gap, but in gap as such, they are not found. For example, the Anasiga batraka sahyadrensis, which was initially Uh, reported from anamalai is now found even in uh, silent valley or even further north and up to pelicate it is reported so nasiga patraka sahyadrensis is found on either side of palakkad gap so this is a this is, you may be aware that this is related to uh, species of frogs found in sikkilas and also it's a gondwan and related related to uh, african lineages of frogs then you have this nikki patrakidae 
of, of frogs that is the uh, frogs that is stream frogs that is um, endemic to western ghats the endemic the family itself is endemic to western ghats and you have this um, found on either side of palakkad gap very high diversity on either side of palakkad gap but you don't have any native bacteria colonized in the palakkad gap again so it uh, talks about the requirement of climatic conditions then you have this indrana species so indrana species is very interesting because they don't develop in the water they develop in uh, sea pages and this is the tadpole of indrana that also have high diversity on either side of palakkad gap but inside the palakkad gap there is no of this none of these species are found then you have this micrisalis group of uh, frogs there is no lot of discoveries in this micrisalis group so they are also found on either side of palakkad gap but they are not found in the palakkad gap then there are interesting species which is found on the north of palakkad gap but not found south of palakkad gap gatophrene so you have two species of gatophrene that is gatophrene ornata and gatophrene rubigena both are found on north of palakkad gap but they are not found south of palakkad gap so for this group it was a barrier for dispersal so this is a uh, uh, nasiga batracus frog so here it is found then in palakkad gap like uh, like you are talk, talking about amphibians interesting amphibian you have a sicilian so you might have come across sicilians well doing in your home itself while doing agriculture and other thing so ethiopis bombians is a very uh, common especially in uh, near paddy fields and water locked areas even at the base of the coconut trees you can see ethiopis bed of bombians especially in rainy season then this ethiopis tricolor so these two species you can see in palakkad gap but these are also widely distributed in western ghats so these were successfully colonized in palakkad gap then we will not say it is uh, in palakkad gap but in silent valley we have uh, endemic frog that is a micrisalis thumbi so that was discovered during the silent valley expedition during the 1970 79 so this is endemic to silent valley then there is a huge uh, big group of, of frogs called bush frogs which is highly diverse in western ghats and they have a direct development so they don't lay eggs in water so this is this pseudophilatus carni so this frog is a arachophorid that is found in palakkad gap so in the rainy season you can see even in palakkad town you can always hear them after the sunset throughout the night you can hear them so very tiny uh, frog in the bushes a very small frog pseudophilatus carni it is very prominent uh, very well there in the palakkad gap and you have this uh, arachophorus malabaricus so that is also there especially on the Uh, uh, western side where there is line uh, rainfall is slightly higher you can see this rack for for us malabar it is but on the eastern side of palakkad gap where it is much drier especially the chittur and the polinambara uh, and all those areas you don't see this uh, rack for for us malabar it is but you see uh, polypedetes maculatus outside then you have like the earlier we talked about the snakes you have this uh, salia so salia is a very interesting uh, genus of lizards that is found in high altitude um, mountain sholas of mountain sholas of uh, nilgiri and anamalai so for this the palakkad gap has been a dispersal uh, barrier so this is nilgiri salia and you have this anamalai salia on the anamalais then again coming to our uh, spit vipers like malabar spit viper is found throughout western ghats but they again within palakkad gap there are no malabar pit vipers but on either side of uh, gap there are malabar pit viper again talking about uh, like they, it was palakkad gap was not a barrier for their dispersal historic species then you have of course uh, uh, endemic snakes in the higher mountains especially in nilgiri this is a horseshoe pit viper so that is restricted to uh, nilgiri not in uh, not then again we like surprising species which we think that they are dispersal limited the forest cane turtle that is the that is again it was found from cochin it was earlier called cochin forest cane turtle discovered from cochin uh, so this is again found on either side of palakkad gap so it is found in even in up to karnataka it is found to the remote it is found so this also the palakkad gap was not a dispersal for, a dispersal barrier for this 
then of course birds so most of the birds what we see in western ghats are like have a very wide range throughout the western ghats so here also especially birds was not much a barrier other than the high altitude um, habitat specialists where they are found in shola and mammals of course there were never a, a dispersal barrier so most, most of the mammals are found on either side of the palatakya even the uh, high canopy uh, species such as the lion tailed macaque which we uh, which we know that they they can't survive outside forest areas are found like on either side of the palatakya the other example is the nilgiri tar though uh, recent studies suggest that there is some genetic structuring in nilgiri tar like on either side of palatakya but they are not uh, like enough to uh, enough enough they don't need, not enough genetic differences to uh, to uh, like there are genetic differences but not enough to say they are different species so, of course uh, elephants again elephants there is interestingly there is a genetic structuring on either side of palakkad gap this was one of the earlier reports of the uh, where they, they clearly showed that there is a genetic structuring in elephants on either side of palakkad gap northern south of palakkad then other uh, like recent taxonomic changes the synonymous that our great uh, tufted gray lung tufted gray lung which is also found in drier areas of the palakkad gap especially the dry deciduous forest areas of palakkad gap so earlier all these were uh, considered as a single species now recent taxonomic changes have made into several uh, species but so other common ma mammalian species which we come across in not in palakkad gap as such but in the forest areas in palakkad gap is uh, samba then uh, coming to little history of uh, how the historically it has influenced and the western ghats is known uh, to the outside world for a long time especially because of the uh, forest produce and other things spices and other things so this is the map of um, periplus of the erythrian sea the author is unknown but it is supposed to be in the first century ad so where they have mapped where different products are this is the uh, ship route of the that and where they have got what and this essentially talks about the various spices and other forest produce what so western ghats is known for time immemorial and this is one of the er earliest um, british uh, documentation of western ghats and where you have uh, sispara pass and it is supposed to be the route from calicut to the nilgiri uti where this uh, there was a horse route uh, where uh, people used to uh, transport materials and letters and other correspondence through sispara pass so this is the uh, panoramic view of sispara pass you can see the new amenable and other parts which we have shown earlier so what are the major um, changes in this areas open happened over the years no like on the on the there are two panels here so on the central panel you have the different periods and on the left hand side you have the ecological changes that has happened and on on the right hand side you have the uh, summary of the human history so if you about 12000 years ago so that is the time most of the india was colonized that is the uh, paleolithic period so hunting and gathering was the major mode of occupation of by people and there is um, evidence that suggests that there is a decline in forest and increase in savanna in northern part of karnataka so then you have this coastal deforestation that is happening so people are uh, deforest deforesting the coastal areas use of fire so that is about um, uh, 5000 years ago use of fire origin of agriculture settled villages hunting gathering and many sites and from goa to kerala you get this early human colonization so evidence of archaeological evidences then you have this slash and burn agriculture so that is about 5000 to 3000 years ago for use of iron then you have the people from harappa and deccan coming to the peninsula in india and colonizing in kerala and other parts and changes in vegetation nilagiris are noticed at that time then you have this organized agriculture about 2000 years ago so that is a modern time that is megalithic period that that is the time you have this contact with outside world especially roman trade with roman empire and other places 
then you have spice trade shifting cultivation and other things a uh, neolithic agri agro pastoralism and agri pastoralism all those things happen then all the about 1000 years ago expansion of agriculture modern villages are formed about 1000 years ago and that is the time you have the sacred groves sp spread of modern religions happens about 1000 years ago then the deforestation of lowland for a start for timber and firewood about when the modern villages and modern cities were developing about 5000 to 500 years ago then you have this increase in spice trade and early documentation european trade and early documentation of uh, flora and fauna started happening then origin of modern towns so that is about uh, 500 to 400 years ago and like that is a time when european discovered the trade routes then about 200 years ago the hill stations the crop crop plantations all those things happen so modern towns mines dams industries and all those things are about happening at that time There's especially the british raj then you have this uh, modern uh, urban sprawl landscape changes fragmentation forest plantation so that is less than 100 years old. so the <clears throat> when we look at the the fauna the current distribution of fauna and flora we have to consider the human history also because humans have changed the landscape so much and many things what we think as uh, the natural may not be natural because the many places local extinctions have happened because of these changes in land use and land cover change and many species have vanished and what we see as a disjunct distribution of same species in the north and south of Palakkad gap is largely due to human colonization and human uh, destruction and uh, human made extinction of the uh, fauna and flora in the gap so but remnants of this can still be seen in uh, sacred groves like there are small patches of sacred groves uh, dotted throughout the gap and on either side of the palakkad gap even up to the coastal area where still you can see there is remnant uh -huh. remnant, uh, remnant uh, patches of the uh, patch forest patches or even remnant flora and fauna but Though these uh, for, uh, small patches may not hold uh, big charismatic mammals or birds, still you can see a lot of uh, insects and spiders and several invertebrates, which are all originally forest species, but still found in these places. So this gives an idea that what would have been the original land cover in these areas. So the basically the European discovery of um, Indian biodiversity, Western Ghats biodiversity started with Vasco de Gama. And um, Carola Linnaeus described several species from our region, especially from Palakkad Gap and other places, especially insects and other things. And other major compilation was the Fabricius. Basically, Fabricius got a specimens collected by travelers and other things described from uh, this part of the Western Ghats. Then you have Truray. He illustrated and described many species from Western Ghats, including uh, Palakkad and Nilagiris and other places, essentially by people who are in come for European trade. Then around 1800, Tonawan uh, started summarizing species that is recorded from uh, several species. So by this time, several uh, Europeans had settled in this part of the Western Ghats and they were continuously supplying materials to European Museum and people were uh, describing and doing scientific studies on these groups. So T.C. Jordan is one of such persons who has extensively documented birds and several of you may know T.C. Jordan. Then another person is uh, Blanford. Uh, Blanford is important person in mammals, but his uh, brother, another Blanford, I think H.W. Blanford, was the person who is a geologist. And H.W. Uh, Blanford is one of the person who uh, first uh, talked about the Palakkad Gap and Nilgiris and how Nilgiri mountains rose and how Animale mountains rose and other things. But he proposed that this is due to subduction, that is because of the uh, tectonic events, the land went and because of erosion and river valley formation, these were eroded and other things. But uh, that was uh, that was the theory of Palakkad Gap for several years, but it was later uh, changed into the, 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 the association with Madagascar, which I showed you now. So the Blanfords have a, a contribution to Palakkad Gap, especially studies and other things. Then Francis Day, of course, on fishes. Several of you may know Francis Day. Then Bowlinger on amphibians. And Nelson Anandale on several faunal groups. 
and of course the uh, sl hora so the satpuda hypothesis the famous satpuda hypothesis which uh, salimali also talks about in his uh, book the interlude in nilgiri is part of his in uh, fall of espiro so where he talks about the satpuda hypothesis sl hora so he was the uh, one of the one of the very well known biogeographers by basic basically studying on fishes he hypothesized that the land bridge connection uh, the land corridor connection between western ghats and eastern himalaya that is how several of the fishes what we found in western ghats are have indo malayan affinities but later studies found that these are all because of evolutionary convergence they have similar morphology but they are not a taxonomically related species so the satpuda hypothesis is uh, proposed by sl hora then of course uh, salim ali have did extensive studies on birds and the uh, wonderful documentation made them by uh, birds of kerala and later by the uh, handbook of birds of india so these were documented earlier then there were several other people from uh, pro and professionals from different profession like defense forces indian forest service indian medical service like indian civil servants professionals so uh, like you may be knowing several of them work uh, like big binham is well known in butterflies and studying beltiar the own butterflies so these people documented the uh, prona from different parts of like evans and fletcher so several of them were working in museums and other thing even after retirement and they continuously did work on the fauna of this area then you have very the indigenous uh, tribes in and around palakkad gap so gap as such you don't have many tribes now but most of the tribes are hill tribes either uh, uh, restricted to nilagiris or anyways so todas are nilagiris are well known for their unique uh, habits of buffalo herding and their unique architecture and their uh, embroidery work then most of this um, so now what is happening is that earlier most of this agriculture was sustenance farming so mass, small farm holds and very uh, sustenance farming and multiple crops and other things so very much uh, associated with forest and at a very minimum intervention level people were doing agriculture still you can see such kind of things in very small pockets in atapadi and other places these are all kind of small uh, sustenance farming by mostly by uh, our friends from indigenous communities sustenance on very small farm holds and other things then now like what has happened is that uh, the kind of farming has been changed into very intensive uh, plantations like large scale intensive plantation this is a uh, plantation of a pineapple which you all know uh, what is happening the large scale land transformations then you have other uh, like uh, problems coming in that is the the uh, invasive species and mostly the icornia and the pistia and all those things are colonizing our water body this is the uh, picture of uh, kalpatipura you may be many of you may know so this is uh, downstream of malambura so mostly it is pool there is more no water flowing again you have another problem coming in our forest is uh, this is photos from agastya malai but same problem is there in several part this is the uh, mycenia macranda is infesting in several of our forest places then you have other uh, invasive alien invasive weeds uh, that is coming in into the system is the landana camara so that is very much encroaching our forest lands and other natural habitats so recently <clears throat> maybe last uh, i started seeing this in palakkad gap in last 10 years only this is mimosa invasia so this is a very uh, noxious weed is spreading very fast now it is found in several parts of the palakkad gap especially in disturbed habitats and it is um, like also it is a poisonous plant for the livestock but it is uh, covering most of the under story so that movement of other things are stop movement of animals in the under stop <clears throat> these are the other invasive plants that is uh, started uh, colonizing is that parthini merlia parthini was not much there but on the from the eastern side of palakkad gap drier areas it has started colonizing extensively then on the, again on the eastern side you can see the that our uh, what do you call it? the prosera juliflora that is also in the drier tracks it is started colonizing so slowly it is colonizing whenever there is a 
opportunity slowly it is colonizing the gap so there are other um, major issues in the kalakad gap nowadays is conservation issues that is the uh, man animal conflict especially in the walayar area you can reg regularly see in newspapers so the elephants are trying trying to cross the railway tracks and get mauled by the fast moving trains so so this is a major problem in the uh, wildlife problem in uh, kalakad gap this is a very uh, uh, regular event because the of course the ele elephant populations have increased in nilgiri biosphere reserve and they are in search of food and uh, water and this increases the conflict with human beings because all the forest areas adjoining forest areas give you we do very high nutritive value cultivated food which attracts elephants and uh, other mammals which in that which leads into direct conflict with humans then another uh, conflicting bird uh, that is uh, becoming uh, very pestiferous in gap is the peacock so peacock is everybody knows that peacock is has increased population in palakkad gap and in, in agriculture it causes damage it's a need to be acknowledged and uh, we need to uh, like find solutions for it because why the peacock population is increasing in agriculture areas we need to know but uh, especially because they have become very much uh, habituated to human habitations and and they are becoming very very common in human habitation so i think with this i will stop now and uh, we can open the session for a discussion thank you uh, thank you dr subramanian that was a yes, thank you uh, wonderfully detailed and uh, both in depth and scope it was uh, quite good i'll open this to the participants before that there was one question that came in about uh, the diversity of uh, earthworms uh -huh. so any uh, anything you have to oh. yeah so i i don't have currently data but there is one interesting um, huge giant earthworm in palakkad gap that is called the uh, dravida so this dravida is a huge i think one of the largest earthworms in the world and this dravida is essentially found in uh, like northern part of palakkad gap especially the wetter areas so so this is a uh, very interesting and this this is supposed to be uh, one of the earlier one one of the ancient forms of this one so i don't know much about it but i can okay i think uh, i'll uh, open venus sir is on line i think no yes hey, yeah. i'm here yeah mm -hmm. venus sir uh, the driving force behind this uh, Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you one sir thank you thank you i should thank you doctor no no so uh, you have so anything have, to say yeah tell me sir yeah i have a couple of small points uh, she uh, you may be aware that lot of amateur uh, bird watchers etc are active in and, in and around palkar gap do you yes. have any any piece of advice to them to make their uh, observations Uh, in the gap more scientifically relevant i think uh, already they are doing a wonderful work sir especially with the bird atlas work and other things they are doing very well and i think they are already into that uh, scientific frame of mind and i think uh, they should open a up a window of a larger organism so so many things to learn from uh, palakkad gap and i think uh, we all have become a naturalist because of palakkad gap because uh, so many ponds and so many ecosystems around palakkad gap and it gives an opportunity to study different groups of organism not just uh, uh, the birds from birds we can uh, graduate into other groups we can gra easily graduate into bird uh, butterflies and dragonflies which are similar to birds in identification basically you use color and uh, morphology then like uh, people who are interested they can uh, do for like plants especially plants i think we need to have a uh, 
like a good uh, capacity building to be developed because several plants are becoming invasive and uh, colonizing in the uh, gap especially from the coming from the deccan part so drier parts of uh, and deccan so several plants are coming as because you know that it's a trade route so several plants uh, colonize across along the railway lines and roads highways and they get colonized and that's it. so this is a very nice opportunity to also look for invasive alien species so the monitoring of invasive alien species is a, a big thing throughout the world i think we should also start looking at those kind of species thank you doctor thank you uh, namaskar sir പാലക്കാട് ചുരം 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 എന്ന് മാത്രമേ നമ്മൾ കേട്ടിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നുള്ളൂ അതൊരു കോയമ്പത്തൂരിലേക്ക് പോകാനുള്ള ഒരു വഴി മാത്രമാണ് വിചാരിച്ചത് പക്ഷെ ഈ മലമ്പ്രദേശങ്ങൾക്ക് അതിന്റെ ഉത്ഭവം മുതൽ അതിലുള്ള ജീവജാലങ്ങളെ അതിന്റെ ത്രട്ട് മുതലായ എല്ലാ കാര്യങ്ങളും ചുരുങ്ങിയ സമയം കൊണ്ട് ഒന്ന് എത്തി നോക്കി കാണിച്ചു തരാൻ വളരെ എഫക്റ്റീവ് ആയിട്ടും പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ആയിട്ടും അളന്ന് തൂക്കിയ വാക്കുകൾ കൊണ്ട് അദ്ദേഹം പറഞ്ഞു അദ്ദേഹത്തിന് അങ്ങനെ പറയാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ കാരണം അദ്ദേഹം കുട്ടിയായിരിക്കുമ്പോഴും കോളേജിൽ പഠിക്കുന്ന കാലത്ത് ഞാൻ അറിയാം അന്ന് തന്നെ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ മനസ്സിൽ പാലക്കാട് പാലക്കാട് ഗ്യാപ്പ് ധാരാളം ഉണ്ട് നിറഞ്ഞു നിന്നിരുന്നു അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രവീണും ഇദ്ദേഹമൊക്കെ കൂടി ചേർന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒരു ഗാഡ് സൊസൈറ്റി പറഞ്ഞ് ഒരു നാച്ചുറൽ ഹിസ്റ്ററി സൊസൈറ്റി തുടങ്ങിയുണ്ടായി പക്ഷെ അത് സ്റ്റിൽ ബോൺ ആയിപ്പോയി അപ്പൊ കുട്ടിക്കാലം മുതലേ പാലക്കാടിന്റെ ഈ ഗ്യാപ്പിലും അതിന്റെ ജീവജാലങ്ങളും നാച്ചുറൽ ഹിസ്റ്ററി കുറിച്ച് ഇത്രയും താല്പര്യത്തിലാണ് സുബ്രഹ്മണ്യം നടന്നിരുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് നമുക്ക് അദ്ദേഹത്തെ തന്നെ ഇന്ന് ഈ കാര്യങ്ങൾക്ക് കിട്ടിയതിൽ വളരെയധികം നമുക്ക് ഭാഗ്യമുണ്ട് എല്ലാവരും ചേർന്ന് അദ്ദേഹം പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ വിവിധ മറ്റു ജീവജാലങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് മനസ്സിലാക്കാനും പഠിക്കാനും സിറ്റിസൺ സയൻസിനെ എൻട്രി ചെയ്യാനും എല്ലാവരും ശ്രമിക്കുമെന്ന് വിശ്വാസത്തോടെ താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് സുബു താങ്ക് so um, see like you may be knowing like um, over the years na palakkad gap has uh, becoming very much urbanized so like uh, over the years all the paddy fields have been converted into uh, housing areas and other places i i and uh, insect diversity has uh, substantially like reduced like if you like several species of insects which we were used to see earlier are now now seen within the uh, like town limits or within the which were which were there earlier, especially moths so earlier we used to see lot of moths now several of these moths are not available another uh, thing we have noticed is that the decline of some species like the uh, southern birdwing butterflies in the, uh, in the urban areas like earlier we used to see lot of southern birdwing and uh, um, butterflies in the in, in the within the town itself but especially because of urbanization also loss of food plants so actually if you look at the the kind of um, gardening what we do you know essentially we do aesthetic gardening we are not doing any functional gardening what happens is that mostly we cultivate lot of exotic plants so which are looking good to us but that doesn't attract any insects or any uh, butterflies or anything say so they, they mostly they are sterile gardens with a large sterile lawns which doesn't even attract um, or, uh, grasshoppers or any other insects so that is i think one of the major reasons for decline of insect populations and that is related also related to a uh, decline in maybe decline in like for example uh, i can clearly say that when i was uh, studying in victoria college and other you know victoria college ground had lot of larks uh, the paddy 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 field pipits and uh, that our singing bush larks and then uh, black belly fish larks was very common in victoria college ground but nowadays you don't see them largely i think largely because of a destruction of uh, habitats and loss of uh, the nesting grounds similarly if you see uh, like our uh, uh, that uh, what is that that our weaver bird common baya weaver so it was nesting uh, in, in even in palakkad town extensively it was nesting but now 
it is all gone largely because of loss of paddy fields so loss of paddy fields in and around palakkad one was a major uh, source of destruction to biodiversity i would say yeah uh, we have dr kathireeshwari uh, uh, from kongarada arts and science college uh, would you like to add something madam yes uh, actually uh, i done lot of work on uh, thorn diversity in western ghats area with the help of uh, dr jm julka retired uh, scientist from zdsi so actually we found some species uh, dravida lenora dravida sulcata so actually one person asked that question no uh, regarding earth worm yeah. yeah but dravida pellucida pallida dravida sulcata dravida lenora and uh, sir already subramani sir already mentioned about the dravida grandis so that is also found in palkad gap so she can refer the paper we already published in the year 2006 uh, by me katreshri and jayraj so she can refer okay. that paper so that she can get uh, that list of earthworms uh, uh, that found in uh, palkad gap kanji ko so this uh, this is dravida 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 genus is restricted to at this area is it madam or it is found anywhere else yes sir uh, yeah dravida grandis particularly restricted in that neel gris uh, food hills and uh, also in palkad gap okay 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 thank you ma'am thank yeah, you madam thank you sir thank you just information yeah, like yeah thanks thank a lot you, sir bye uh one doubt uh is from uh, i forgot who has asked it it is regarding whether the palakkad gap has played any role in the spread of um, the trees or the flora across the gap oh i was mentioning you earlier no like if you look at the um, uh, the french institute has published very nice uh, maps that is a uh, potential vegetation maps of western ghats so the by potentially if you look at the Uh, climatic potential and the, uh, the rainfall and vegetation potential. If there is no human beings in the Kalakkad Gap, it would have been a forest. So the eastern uh, eastern side would have been a dry forest, and the western side would have been a uh, wet evergreen forest like that. So it is largely because of the influence of human colonization that we have uh, lost most of the forest in the Western uh, in the Kalakkad Gap as such. otherwise if there is no there is a good potential for regeneration of forest if there is no uh, human intervention uh i think said anwar's question is answered here already yeah. and uh, vivek's question is uh, why banasura chilappan and nilagara nilgiri chilappan became different species oh i think uh, robin can answer best that one it is basically uh, phylogenetic analysis but so so genetically they were different so that that's why they became different okay. i think robin or vishnu would be the best persons to answer this okay both of them are not here right now so. not here but we can i can always, yeah. we can always. Yeah. Yeah. but i think that they have made a very good paper on that one so i think okay and i was searching the participants and... list whether they are there so <laughs> both of them are not mm-hmm. they have not joined here today mm-hmm. okay okay so Uh, i think uh, yeah, yeah one one more question i think is from gibiyo de gosh okay uh, with so much data covered over time is there a possibly possible way to detect changes of biodiversity to prefer indicator species for future monitoring in the gap is it yeah yeah in the gap okay so uh, birds yes of course like uh, there is a good paper on um, i think you may all be knowing also there is good paper on the peacock population so peacock population published in current science i remember correctly so where they have shown how the pe- peacocks have actually increased in populations over the years and have started in different parts of the palakkad gap so there are uh, like uh, that is one thing another thing is that uh, the in the gap within like in, uh, like there is not much uh, time series data on uh, several groups but fishes i think you have very good data where we can look at how fish fauna is changing over the years because uh, almost all the um, channels of bharatpura is dammed so we have twelve dams in bharatpura and the river is not flowing at all so that will have caused a considerable change in the fish fauna of uh, bharatpura so similarly if we have Uh, early uh, documentation on the forest especially from the walayar and other places where you have documentation on wildlife and other things so now those things can be 
for like but the good thing is that over the years uh, all these uh, forest areas the wildlife has uh, come back to large largely maybe because of uh, uh, stopping of hunting so we were my, myself and namesh Nar- sir was also discussing about and many of the birds have also started uh, coming large birds especially which were once very popular for uh, meat are now very common in palaghat so this happened last 10 15 years several of these birds and animals have become very common and fearless in the woods okay uh, i think the last question would be uh, person's name is not mentioned it is uh, is palakkad gap affecting wild animals movements or migration uh, large mammals yes like elephants gore or uh, nilgiri car or any other things yes but for small mammals and birds other things i think it is not a barrier but again it is a barrier for a species which is wet loving so several amphibian species and uh, reptile species yes it is a barrier and also several insect species but for most of the higher tetrapods and it is not a barrier which is like i think which is even at a low level it is dispersing even now which are not like uh. Okay, uh, we'll take this as a last question. Is there any solution to resolve the man-animal conflict in Palakkad region? So, I don't know whether it's under the scope of our discussion, but still. But still, it is very, very difficult, I think. Uh, I think it's a huge topic, resolving yeah. conflict, because there's so, so many stakeholders are there. But I think the railway line thing can be resolved to some extent. Now also they are trying to resolve by reducing the speed of the train and also continuously honking and other things. But I think it will be resolved soon I think, by technology, modern technology and other things. This will be resolved soon. But crop raiding by elephants and other things, it is a big issue which we also don't know how to resolve. It's a big problem in several parts of Western Ghats, wherever elephants are there. I think that is not, there is no one short solution to that. Okay, uh, just for information of others, uh, this session has been recorded and I'll try to load this in uh, Facebook. Uh, I, and the second thing is, uh, uh, future meetings also I'll try to load this in Facebook so that uh, through some connections, uh, all of all the people who have kind of come here can get to know about it. And one more question uh, from Dr. Balasubramaniam is, uh, do you find any common disease in animals in this gap? That is, that is uh, uh, livestock, I know, but not uh, wild animals, I don't know. Livestock maybe, I would say the foot and mouth disease is very common in livestock. Also, the once upon a time, render pest is, was very common, but now render pest is not there. But foot and mouth, especially in monsoon, it is very common in, in animals. Okay. Uh, any yes, please. Uh, 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 Geographically, Palakkad Gap is uh, uh, not uh, the African side, the Madagascar side. That is why we have a gap in Palakkad Gap in the West Angers and the Madagascar side. Now, what is the same thing? Uh, the Fawn is the same thing. Millions of years of it has under the Madagascar fauna, what are unique and high endemism fauna in Madagascar? Uh, and I'm not Madagascar girl and Corona endemism. geologically marriage in the there is a lot of dry air in the Korea, and there is a lot of species in the Korea, and there is a lot of species in the Korea. 
അങ്ങനെയാണ് നീലഗിരി താറൊക്കെ താറൊക്കെ ഹിമാലയൻ സാധനം അതൊക്കെ ഇവിടെ വന്നത് ഹിമാലയൻ താറും നീലഗിരി താറും ഡിഫറൻസ് അതാ പണ്ട് നമ്മളെല്ലാരും ഒരേ ഗ്യാപ്പിലായി ഒരു ഏരിയയിലായിരുന്നു പിന്നെ അത് ഡൈവേഴ്സ് ആയി പോയതല്ലോ അല്ല അങ്ങനെയല്ല അതായത് ഇപ്പൊ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഗ്ലേസിയേഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ ഒരു ഒരു കൂളിംഗ് ഒരു കൂളിംഗ് പീരീഡ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഒരു ഇരുപതിനായിരം മുപ്പതിനായിരം വർഷം മുമ്പുള്ള ഒരു ഗ്ലേസിയേഷൻ ടൈം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഒരുപാട് സ്പീഷീസ് അവിടെ നിന്ന് ഇങ്ങോട്ട് മൈഗ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്തു സൗത്ത് സൗത്ത് ഇന്ത്യക്ക് ഹിമാലയൻ റീജിയൻ അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ വന്നാണ് ഈ നീലഗിരി താറൊക്കെ അങ്ങനെ വന്നത് So I think uh, that's about it. We'll close here, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Subramanian. Thank you. And uh, 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 where will we can find uh, the details about Natural History Society of Palakkad? Uh, the, best web pay, the Facebook page will be up soon. Uh, okay. This is the link. I have not made it public as yet. Uh, but it will be made public soon. Thank okay. you. Thank Thanks you. a lot for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.